Today, we're going to look at Bayard, the Tier 7 French Premium Light Cruiser. She's kind of like a Degrasse on steroids, except two tiers higher. Is she worth bringing to your port? Let's find out. Before we look at the commander build, let's set up the game in the background. See a fortune, and we're going to use our speed to head out for one of the flanks. Bayard is a very squishy cruiser, can easily be taken out of the match by a single battleship salvo, so it's a ship where you'll want to keep your head on a swivel. The beginnings of matches, it will be best to take it slow, see how the match develops, find out where all of the battleships are going to be, and so on. I tested both Liminaire and Rue an equal amount of games, and personally, I find that Liminaire fits my playstyle a little bit better, but either one of them could be very strong builds. As for the modules, aiming systems, propulsion, rudder, and MBM3. While I did test a full agility build with Rue, I decided on using more of a hybrid build with Liminaire, double fire with Valacious, rudder, and fully packed. Membelli and Azerlane Baltimore were my inspirations, but I think you could also use Makawa to boost the concealment a little bit if you wanted to. You could absolutely do double rudder for a full agility build, however I like the option with prop mod to regain my speed quickly, so personally I'm going to use that, but double rudder would be very good with this as well. Concealment module. You could if you plan to spend most of your time behind islands, but if you want to open water gunboat with the Bayard, then I probably would take rudder in slot 3. Your gun firing angles are not very good at all. You're going to need to swing the back end of your ship around quite a bit to get your back two turrets in the fight, and the rudder's going to help you a lot with that. Last but not least, fully packed, I would probably take that over refill station just because of how useful it is to have a third win button or reload booster whatever you want to call it and a third speed booster so in game here we noticed bismarck was going wide i decided to turn back in and take a more central approach but we got spotted by the destroyer along the way really wasn't expecting that so this is a misplay if you're in a cruiser open water fighting you never want an island between you and turning out. So again, very, very bad play. Probably lucky to be alive. Really wasn't expecting the DD here, and I kind of thought the Bismarck would keep going wide. But anyways, little things like this you have to watch out for because uh, in this French baguette, it could mean the end of your game. So stats-wise, this is a very, very fragile ship. Her health pool is almost as bad as the Weimar. It's the second worst at tier 7 for the cruisers. And on top of that, you don't have any heals to bring health back. Not many light cruisers at the tier do not have heals. <laughs> Even Weimar, the ship without a fourth mod slot, has heals. Moving on to the armor, it's not going to impress you that much. Uh, she has a 25mm bow and stern that can be overmatched by anything bigger than 356mm. It is better than the PC. On PC, she has 16mm up front and in the back. So it's a little better than that. Uh, once again, we get the Legends treatment. I guess they don't think we're very good cruiser players or something. I don't know. But um, she has some spaced armor section, a completely enclosed citadel, but the citadel is a little above the waterline. Mostly, I'm going to say it's bad. Um, the freeboard of this ship and these big massive sides, it's, it's kind of a recipe for disaster. Uh, it's a big target. It's easy to hit if not for the agility and speed but anyways we're going to get there now the reload is 7.5 base it means her he and ap dpm are actually really good it's going to be the fifth best high explosive dpm out of all the tier 7 cruisers and about sixth place for ap so above average really good the HE shells, they artificially get the uh, the Ochikov treatment they can pin 30 millimeters of armor Kind of also like the Belfast 43, it's going to lead to a lot less shatters overall and more damage, and you can really rack up the damage in this boat. You're also going to be starting a lot of fires. I think it's 12% base, but if you're doing the build I am here with Lemonier, it turns into 17%, which is really saucy. You should be setting a lot of fires. The gun firing arcs. They're really bad. They're not as bad as like Atlanta, but they're bad. You're going to struggle to hit targets farther away, especially small things like destroyers. 
but I guess it could make it easier to lob your shells over as you are sitting behind an island. You get three torpedoes on each side. They reach 9 kilometers, they're not very fast, 60 knots, and they deal a very average amount of damage. But since their range is good, you can kind of just keep dropping them, maybe like the Italian cruisers, and hopefully get a hit here or there every now and then, and they'll protect you from getting YOLO'd, so it's nice to have them. On to the AA. It's average to below average. 212 is the DPM, so don't expect to roast enemy planes when a carrier targets you. You'll have to be a little wary of enemy squadrons. Usually, though, the agility is going to protect you from that, unless, of course, you are just sitting behind an island. But that brings us to the maneuverability, and this is where this ship is really going to shine. 34 knots base. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in typical French fashion, you get the best speed boost in the game. 20% boost for three minutes at a time. That's going to bring you up to about 41 knots. If you're also using full speed ahead and velocious, 46 knots. So this is an absolute speed demon when you're running the engine consumable, of course. It makes for a very hard target to hit for the enemies if you're in the open water. So this is a pretty good open water gunboat. On top of that, base rudder shift is a little bit above average. You can get it down to... Well, on my build, it's five seconds, but say you are a full agility fiend and you put Azerlain Baltimore on there and everything, 2.3 seconds. So this could be a very, very annoying ship to play against. And then the concealment, 12.7, it's pretty average. You could do the concealment module, but um, just remember that uh, the firing angles are not good. You can see here as I'm turning to shoot this Flander, I'm having to turn quite a bit to get my front guns into the fight. So having a quick rudder shift to wiggle back and forth and avoid incoming salvos is pretty much a must if you're going to open water gunboat. Speaking of that, how should you play her? Sitting behind an island or out in the open water? I would say both. After about 20 battles in her, it's really going to come down to what map you're on and how things are going. It's very situational. You can absolutely be an island camper, and I think if that is the way the map is set up, you need to take advantage of this and farm from behind cover when you can, because when you do, it's just going to lower the chances of you getting downright deleted or taking a lot of damage that is going to hurt your end game. But with its good speed and agility, open water fighting is also fine. You just have to keep your head on a swivel and always pay attention to who's looking at you and what's in the area. It's why I like this middle of the road build, so that I can do both, whichever the uh, situation calls for. I have both options. Stock, you still have decent speed and maneuverability, especially with the speed boost, but I like to take just a couple more defensive perks to help keep me alive a little bit longer. And that with the 17% fire chance with Lemonier, this is a pretty versatile boat. Harry Potential. Hmm. I'm really going to say it's in the middle of the pack on carry potential. Because of your agility and DPM, yes, you have a chance of pulling off some crazy stunts. However, the armor, the small health pool, the inability to get health back, and the inability to really spot destroyers. You don't have a radar, you just have a normal French sonar. It's going to hurt your ability to carry without a division. You know, if you're a solo player, you might not have the greatest win rate in this ship, even if you are a pretty good cruiser player. Pushing and being aggressive, say in the early game into cap circles, things that you can do in like the mines or the hipper that could quickly kill a destroyer and uh, really turn the tide of a battle, that's not something that you can safely do in this ship. Unless you know exactly where the enemy battleships are, you're certain there's no crossfires or large ships in the area with large caliber guns, because really, all it takes is one salvo to either dev strike you or to take enough of your health that you're going to be a non-factor for the rest of the match. I found it best to play from a little farther back, make the enemies cycle their damage cons, deal damage, thin out the reds, and when you do so, you'll have the ability to push and uh, get caps, hunt destroyers, and do things like that. So just try to be cautious at the beginning of matches, and I think you'll do pretty good. This ship has a lot of potential. Now, speaking of that, th this battle, it's pretty much over. There is a black, and I'm finally going to get to move up and hunt him down. 
but we are just dodging shots, trying to stay alive. And I was kind of expecting some black torpedoes, actually, but they're still not here. So let's see with the sonar still up if we can go find him. The ship plays as a really good kiting cruiser, but that doesn't always mean you have to be running kind of like this Vanguard. With our agility, you know, we're able to dodge his shots even when we're sailing towards him. So don't think you always have to be sailing away from the enemy. That's not true. For credit earning potential, it's there. All of these games, I'll put them up on the screen here, are without credit boosters, so you can definitely rack up some good silver in a high DPM ship like this. Tier 7, of course, is really the best tier to earn the in-game currency right now, so if you've been looking for a ship to do so, this could be it. And that brings me to my overall opinion on this ship. I think it's very strong, and in the right hands, kind of like Plymouth, it can be a tough opponent to face. The speed helps you get around the map quickly to take objectives, hunt destroyers. It's a very fast-paced gameplay style if you want it to be, or you could sit behind an island too. Reload boosters. <laughs> They're arguably the most fun thing in World of Warships. In fact, let's see how this black fares against us at close range. We have one more reload booster coming online. We also have a thousand health, so it might be close. With the ship, I would say, remember your one battleship salvo away from heading back to port, so the skill ceiling is a little bit higher. You have to have a pretty good grasp of cruiser concepts to do well and enjoy her. But with that, a couple seconds, black's gone, and yes, the reload boosters are very strong. Overall, let me know what you guys think of her in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to smash the like button. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe for future videos, blah, blah, blah. See you in the next one.